Hi everyone for Motion VFX. This tutorial will teach you how to create 3D death effects with pictures and stock footage using MTracker 3D. But first, let's see the final project. Here, I'm in motion with my 4K footage. First, I need to extract the motion of the camera from this scene and analyze the 3D depth of this shot. To do so, I will use MTracker 3D. You can find it in the filters library in the Motion VFX category. I will drag and drop it on my clip and I will click on the track button. I will accelerate the analysis, but for information, the total length of the analysis is around 4 minutes. So the analysis is done, I can see that a new target icon is now available. I can click on it in order to select where I want to add my elements. As you can see, the axis is aware of the 3D environment of the scene. I will add it in the center of the front of the building. I can check if the axis is following the building. Perfect. All the data extracted by MTracker 3D are placed in the Favorites library, where you can find the 3D camera and the 3D group. I will open the project pane and see that we've got the video and the MTracker 3D filter apply on it. I will rename the group as Video Background. It is really important to name your various elements to keep it clear. As you will see, we will get many layers in this project. I will add the 3D group and the camera from MTracker 3D to my project. I can switch to the perspective view to check the camera animation. The 3D group contains the position's keyframe animations, so any elements inside the group will stick on the building. Let's add a picture to demonstrate it. I will click on the import button and select my images folder. Inside I've got some picture of damaged buildings. I will import the first one. I will name the group All. And as you can see, I will need to rotate the X axis to get the right position. So I will enter minus 90. I will need to adjust the size. And we can see that the picture follow perfectly the building. I will adjust the position. Let's do some color correction to match with the video background. I will use the color balance filter and the levels filter to get it right. The lower right part doesn't fit with the building, so I need to remove it. I will simply use the mask tool, but before adding the mask, one important tip. As you can see, we are not at the frame 1, and during this project, I will add many elements on various timing. Be sure that in the motion preferences, in the project tab, the create layer at option is set to start of project. Otherwise, you will have to modify the in point of the various element each time. So now I can draw a mask. I will adjust the shape to create a nice all effect. I will need to soft the edges. Here another tip, the overlay of the mask can hide the part where you are working on. So to be able to adjust the softness and see the final result, don't hesitate to use the key command plus slash to hide the overlays. So I will adjust the edges and the levels. OK, let's add the second picture. This one will help me to give some perspective effect on the right side. I will copy the colors filters and adjust them. I will add the U saturation filter to remove some saturation. I will also mask this picture. 
Okay, so now we have our gap inside the building, but it is flat. The effect doesn't work. We need to add some depth and parallax effect. So I will group my two pictures and name it master. To create the depth effect, I will draw a shape in order to create a hole inside the gap, like this. I will need to reset the position and the rotation of the shape and adjust the size and the position. I will select my master group and do a right click. I will add a mask image and use the shape as a source for the mask. I need to invert the result as I want to extract this part, so I will switch to the subtract mode. Now I will duplicate the group and call it inner. I will switch the blend mode to add and the final result looks as the same as before. But this time I will be able to push away the center to create some depth. Because we have used M-Tracker 3D, we have the 3D depth of the scene and the 3D camera. So it will be very easy to do it without adding any keyframe. So I will push away the center. We can see that we have a parallax effect due to the depth. Of course, we don't want to see the building inside the effect. So I will adjust the size of the mask. Don't hesitate to test various size position to get the best parallax effect. Let's have a look at the effect. To accentuate the parallax effect, we will need to bring back some parts of the building. To do so, I will use a color solid layer and add it to the group. I will adjust the size and the position in order to cover the building. To show you how to bring back some part of the building, I will create a circular mask. And like we did before, I will use an image mask on the group. I will use a color solid layer as a source of the mask. And switch the blending mode to subtract. So now you can see that my circular mask reveals the building. So let's remove the circle and use the Bezier mask. I can reduce the opacity of the color solid layer to see the damages effect. So now if I draw a mask, it will reveal the building. I will do it many times to get some elements back and accentuate the parallax effect. When I'm done, I can add some blur effect to the mask to smooth the edges. I will add some damages on the building, so I will drag a second 3D group to my project. I will name it Building Damages. I will import this picture and place it on the lower part of the building. I will need to adjust the mask. To have a better view on what you are working on, don't hesitate to use a solo mode by clicking on the white square. It is so much easier to focus on your layer with a solo mode. I will copy this layer and use it for the horizontal lines. To 
to get a perfect match between your video background and your pictures or videos with mtalkers 3d you have to be sure that the anchor point of your layer is at the same position or nearby the 3d group axis otherwise your layer can shift and won't match perfectly with the video background but in some case, you will need to move your layer. So here an example and how to manage the problem. I will add a new layer. I will adjust the rotation and the size. I just need a little part of this picture, so I will solo it and draw a Bezier mask. If I move my layer, the anchor point of the layer will move and may add some shift. So in order to move your element without changing the position of the anchor point, I will modify the position on X and Y from the anchor point. It means that I will not move the anchor point, but the content of the layer will move around the anchor point. With this technique, you will be sure that all your picture or video will match perfectly with your video background. Okay, let's add some fire now. I will create a new group, fire, and add it to the effect group. I will reset the position and the rotation of the group. So now I will import some fire video elements. The selection I've done is coming from the Motion VFX stock footage 4K collection pack that you can buy on the Motion VFX website. Like before, I will need to rotate the x-axis. As I will add several elements, to optimize my process, I will modify the x-rotation axis directly at the group level. So all the elements I will import inside will be rotated automatically. So here I will accelerate the process as it is the same as we've done before with the pictures. The only difference is that we will use the add blending mode to integrate the fire elements. For the third one, I would like to add it on the building facade. So I need to add a new 3D group and I will call it Fire Over. I will also need to trim the content in order to get a large fire at the beginning. I will remove some parts by using a mask and adjust the position. Next, inside the gap, I would like to add some fire atmosphere. To do so, I will use the M Fire Blaze footage and add it inside the inner group. I will adjust the position. And I will blur it with a Gaussian blur filter. Because it is a video file, it will add some animation and create some live atmosphere. Over it, I will add some fog footage to add more texture. I will change the color to red to match with the fire. and I will adjust the mask around the gap.
To create a light glow effect around the fire elements, I will simply duplicate them and blur the copy. I will use the Add Blending mode and adjust the opacity. To give some life inside the gap, I will add a spark footage to the inner group. I will draw a mask on the right to remove the bouncing part. Then I will adjust the size, the rotation and the position. I don't want to see it at the beginning, so I will use the mini timeline and trim the in point in the middle of the project. Next, let's add some smoke. Again, I will use a new 3D group and call it smoke. I will add a clip. I will adjust the size and the rotation. To get a nice integration and more controls, I will use the Keyer filter to composite the smoke elements. I will use a Levels filter to darken the smoke. I will use multiple copies of the same footage and I will trim some to add some randomness. Ok, let's render it. To polish the effect, I will do some color corrections. I will use the Mfim look filter. By default, it will add a look that I can fully customize. I will test some presets and see if there is one look I like the most. I will keep the boulevard preset, but I will need to customize it. I will remove the letterbox effect and the off-screen lens flare. I will increase the grain and the exposure. To create a strong contrast between the inside and outside of the building, I will increase the saturation and the vibrance parameter. To conclude, a light vignette effect and it's done. To get more tips and tricks on MTrucker 3D, don't forget to subscribe to the Motion VFX YouTube channel. Thanks for watching. Ciao ciao. Bye bye.